Arid, I'm Lee Hawthorne, and welcome back to the channel. Why am I dressed so ridiculously? I mean, I don't ever look that great anyway, but it's a new low, it's a new low. Uh, but today I'm very excited to have a very special video in which we're going to be uh, talking to Faithful Johannes about his top five Christmas songs. If you don't know who Faithful Johannes is, uh, he has been releasing a Christmas song every year for the last four years, I think, and uh, in a previous project, Outside Your House, also released a song. So I thought it would be the perfect person to give us his top five Christmas songs. Turns out he's actually not that much of a fan. So I'm joined by Faithful Johannes, the Michael Bublé of Northeast Christmas music. <laughs> Hi, Lee. Nice to be here. <laughs> How do you feel about that? Is that something that you like or do you hate that? I'm sorry, I'm just writing down that quote. I'll, I'll be with you in a second. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that's, yeah, I'm, 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 it's all fun, isn't it? You know, I, I'm happy to be described as such. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I kind of think Christmas songs give you an opportunity to kind of be a bit less serious and uh, um, just be a bit more silly, which uh, we all need more of. I mean, the man who brings iron boards to his gigs wanting to be less serious is a big <laughs> shock. <laughs> the ironic thing is, though, Lee, um, I feel like I'm pouring my heart out into my songs. But yeah, no, there's definitely there's definitely gimmicks that, um, yeah, I can't be serious for more than a verse, really. So yeah, that's a fair point. <laughs> so today we're going to be uh, ranking Christmas songs or giving your top five Christmas songs anyway. Um, but you've just told us before we started there that you don't even really like Christmas songs. Oh, really? <sighs> that sucks. Well, it's not like an antipathy, you know, it's not that I don't like Christmas songs, but, um, and I totally understand why, but like, if um, someone's kind enough to write about my music or whatever, they'll sometimes say Christmas obsessed, faithful Johannes or whatever, because they do a song every year. Why, why are you so obsessed with me? But you know, I'm not obsessed. You know, I like them as much as the next person. But um, yeah, when you when you said, you know, what your five favorite Christmas songs, like I didn't have any immediate bangers there in my head. I had to think about it. I think actually, when I started trying to work it out, I realized that there is loads of Christmas songs out there. I know, I know, you know that. But um, and I do like quite a lot of them. So they are good tunes. I think I've picked. But it's not like um, I'm constantly rewriting my list or that I've got like um, like a file on them somewhere. You know. That's really disappointing news because I definitely do. <laughs> the first one that you kind of sent as part of your actual five uh, is a song that I've never heard of by an artist or band, I'm not even sure which it is, uh, that I've never heard of either, which is a uh, Casio Tone for the Painfully Alone, which is a brilliant name. Yeah, so he's, um, so it's a guy called Owen Ashworth from near Chicago, I think. Um, and he now, he had that brilliant name of Casio Tone for the Painfully Alone. But he kind of just ditched it, and, and now he calls it, now he makes music under advanced bass, which I think is a much more disappointing it name. Is. It is, yeah. Um, yeah. So he's he, I think he's fantastic. He's um, so his Casio tone stuff was essentially started out what it sounds like it would do. It's like him with Casio tone keyboards with um, played through guitar pedals to kind of to crunch them up a little bit. Um, the drum beats would often be really kind of big and distorted and kind of simple keys in there and then accompanied by his miserable vocals and it's just there uh, it kind of treads that always treads that line between being really kind of because the beats really kind of turned up every time for me all his stuff treads the line that's brilliant between being quite uplifting and like whoa this is this is something but also being quite upset and a miserable melancholy um so yeah so it's a big influence on me in general <laughs> i would say um, and this is just, it's not like a, this isn't a Christmas song or, as such, um, Cold White Christmas, the one I picked. Um, it's just an album track off uh, the album Metacut, which um, which I recommend. It's uh, if you're into miserable kind of um, fuzzy indie music. Um, yeah, I saw him, um, he taught, he's taught Newcastle a couple of times. Um, I saw him a few years ago and we posed for photos together like this. <laughs> and and then I saw him last year, about five years afterwards, I think, or maybe even longer, maybe like 10 years, I don't know. I saw him again last year anyway, um, and I think about six people came to see him, um, and I stood for the same photo. So, oh. it, was, it was good, bless him. He didn't remember me. Oh, no. <laughs> well, not even with that iconic pose. Ah, you'd have thunk, wouldn't you? But he's, he's taught a lot. Um, 
yeah, so yeah, so an Ashworth basically. He's also done um, some hip hop production as well with with his kind of lo fi things, with a rapper called Serengeti that I'm really into. Um, so yeah, yeah, he's an interesting guy. He runs like a little record label, um, puts out some similar stuff. But um, yeah, big fan, big fan of Casio too. But like you were saying earlier on, you're not such a big fan of Christmas songs, which begs the question, why on earth somebody who isn't that much into Christmas songs would start releasing Christmas songs every year? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I guess, I guess it's because, like I was saying before, they're fun, you know, they're a bit of a release from trying to write um, kind of straight, kind of serious bits all the time. Um, and you you know, you can just be a little bit silly. So I, en- I enjoy making them. So that's that's probably the main reason. I think also um, the ironing board answer kind of feeds into this as well. I like it gimmickly. You may have noticed with the uh, the promised uh, eight inch vinyl release. Um, <laughs> I think you've just got to try and be a bit memorable. You know what I mean? And I think um, me and my friend Johnny used to be in a banquet outside your house, which is when I first started doing the kind of spoken word kind of rap kind of area stuff that I do now and we put a Christmas single out um I think it was 2014 I was looking the other day um and I, I remember saying at the time um oh we should do one of these every year and we were like yeah we'll do one every year and we and then we didn't and as we were breaking up the first song I wrote was my first Christmas song it was like almost like a I'll spite you <laughs> we didn't make one every year but I'm gonna do it now you're not gonna stop me <laughs> um, <laughs> so maybe it was spite a bit of spice in there as well <laughs> All the best things start with spite. My career essentially started with spite. So, you know. It's a lot of power and spite. I mean, I, I haven't got that spite anymore. It, and, you know, we, we did break up amicably and I'm still friends with him. But I think at the time I thought, oh, yeah, we were going to do a Christmas song every year. I know what I'll do now. I'm by myself. I'll do a Christmas song every year. And plus, you know, you, you, you're how successful this would be, you're, you're probably a better place to, to say than me, but I think it's quite, an, I quite enjoy putting it on my biog to put that I'm going to write a Christmas song every year till I die. You know, it's quite engaging. It really is. It definitely stands out. Um, I was curious though, um, you did a stream recently and I've seen kind of a lot of people getting on that and like really loving it. And I think every time you do release a song, especially like this year particularly, it seemed to be the big hype around or when is the Faithful Johannes Christmas song coming out? What was the reaction like back then when you did the first one with Outside Your House and the first one you did on your own? Was it kind of looked at a bit like snobbly? Because I kind of imagine it would be. Um, I didn't notice that. <clears throat> um, I didn't notice that, to be honest. Um, any kind of snobbery. Um, yeah, no, I think it's always been kind of... It's the kind of it's the one thing that crosses over to my, my friends who I don't know through music. Um, you know, like I'll put things out throughout the year and um you know they do okay but it's it's really like my christmas songs that my auntie likes or my friend from school that i've not spoken to in 20 years it's kind of it seems to be the thing that everyone um kind of gets more engaged in so it's quite nice in that way just to kind of uh, get my stuff to a wider audience every year um but yeah no i've not noticed any snobbery i mean there, there could be people saying it but people don't kind of say that kind of thing to your face do you um I've had nothing but positivity on it, really. I think because um, I don't know. I think because they um, they've all been quite um, I don't know, tongue in. Nah, they are kind of tongue in cheek, but they, but uh, but but maybe maybe I'm doing myself down there. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question. There may be snobbery, but I haven't noticed it. And I've got very thin, I've got very thin skin, so um, so I'll assume it's just not there. <laughs> Just pretend it's not as good as it is. <laughs> uh, but the fourth track that you've uh, picked is uh, Chris Rea, which is obviously a northeast Christmas classic, I guess. Well, it's around the world a Christmas classic, but from the northeast. Did that influence being chosen at all, or um, maybe a little bit? I mean, I'm I'm not. I didn't grow up in the northeast. I grew up in uh, Chester in the northwest. Um, but yeah, I've lived here for 15 years or something, and. Um, yeah, I've got a lot of affection for for Middlesbrough and Teesside and stuff. So I guess a little bit, um, but it's mainly just a tune, isn't it? I think um, I think like um, I really like the imagery of um, you know traveling to see your family for Christmas because that's what it's always been like for me really throughout my adult life is kind of like having to get on a train or in a car and and drive normally Christmas Eve, you know, and stuff like that. So I quite I quite like that. Um, but yeah, it's just uh, I've been whistling it all morning since I was since I had it on this <laughs> this morning. Yeah, it's just yeah, it's just nice. I was reading about Chris Reeve actually, and his dad 
used to run like a, a famous ice cream parlour and stuff in Middlesbrough that he worked at and uh, about how he used to get beaten up by football fans that seen him in his ice cream waiter's outfit um, <laughs> before the games and stuff. Um, but yeah, yeah, I think I think the fact he's from Boer kind of is probably a little bit of an influence, but that's a tune that can carry right around the world, I think. Yeah, definitely. It is, to be completely honest with you, the one song on your list that I recognised. Uh, I do know one other, to be fair, um, which we'll get into, but that was the only one that I knew like by name. Yeah. The, the other thing I was going to say about Chris here is that um, it's kind of, he's one of those artists that when I was growing up, because I'm quite old now, but when I was growing up, um, my friend... Is, Chris Rear was the band your friend's dad was into. Um, my dad wasn't into him really, but all my friends, all your friends' dads would be in Dire Straits and Chris Rear, you know, around the late 80s, early 90s. Um, so I guess it reminds me of being a kid as well, you know, like, um, I can remember it coming out, okay, I think. I don't know when it came out, but I remember Chris Rear being big and that was, when that was played at Christmas. Yeah. So like I've alluded to, I don't necessarily know many of these songs. None of my personal top three would be in there. And not that anybody else, but Mariah Carey, he's 17. Um, what is the other one? Wham. Like, why is there no love for the, the classic cheese Christmas songs, the big pop songs? Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess I, I thought Chris Rear was, was that category, to be honest with you. Um, but my, when you put it, against those ones then then i see i see your point do you mean stay another day by 17 yeah yeah Classic. yeah it's yeah it's fantastic yeah i do i do uh i guess i'm just thinking what would i put on like if that if i was in a shop and he's 17 but I'd, I'd be having the time of my life you know i'd be i'd be um <clears throat> i'd be dancing down the aisles and, and enjoying it but i just don't think i'd reach for it at home um i don't know why i guess it's just a personality thing similar with Mar- similar with mariah you know, it is a it is a banging tune. Like every Christmas, I think I'm not annoyed by that. It is good. <laughs> so I've got I haven't I haven't got a problem with your top three. They're a solid top three, mm. but I, I think, in honesty, they're not the ones that I would uh, I would reach for. I'm too miserable. I think I think that might be the I prefer I prefer a wallow than a than a, <laughs> than a celebration. I would usually, but Christmas is the one time of year where I'm like, okay, I'm gonna get rid of all the sad emo stuff and start listening to Mariah. <laughs> All I want for Christmas is Mariah Carey. <laughs> but uh, and, uh, the third song that you've got in your list is uh, another song that I don't necessarily know. And I realise it's very long. Seven and a half minutes long, I think it is. Galaxy 500. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so Gal- Galaxy 500, have you had a listen to it? Uh, uh, I listened to um, about a fifth, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, so it's like um, the, the Galaxy 500 of a... Um, a band. There's a, the the singer's called Dean Wareham, and he he did solo stuff and and Galaxy 500. And then it was in a band called Luna. Um, it's just a really great lyricist. He appears in a lot of Noah Baumbach films. You know, like the New York director. He has bit parts in that and often does the soundtracks and stuff. So it's so it's his band. And the kind of I listened to them a lot when I was in my kind of early twenties when I was first living by myself and got a record player and I had the record this was on, on 12 inch, and it was just like, um, so I lived in Sheffield then, and um, yeah, I remember listening to that kind of when I hadn't been away from home for long, and, and, it, and it was like a few inches of snowfall, and it's just a perfect kind of um, really kind of laid back, um, reverb filled um, kind of song uh, that yeah, to turn to when it's a quiet snowy day, I guess. Um, it's a Yoko Ono song originally, um, that that that's covered, but um, yeah, it's just warm and nice and kind of relaxing. Yeah, it's not overtly a Christmas song. I don't think. I think it's just a snow song. I think you, I think if it snowed in February, you'd be well within your rights to bring it out. I'm sensing a theme here. It's not even like the first song, the <laughs> Casio Tone one, wasn't really a Christmas song. <laughs> I know, but you say it's got Christmas in the title, and he says he says Christmas at least six times. I would say. Oh, fair. I wonder if you have an opinion. I was uh, on Twitter the other day debating this because uh, for Tease Introducing this week, we played the Cherry Head, Cherry Heart song, Road to Rome, and they released a Christmas remix. But to me, the original was very Christmassy and was a Christmas song. How do you feel about that? Can you win? Oh, man. Um, I do like Cherry Head, Cherry Heart. They're lovely people as well. Um, but I, I, I can't comment on this particular remix because I've not heard it. Um, so, you, are you talking about making Christmas remixes of 
of non-Christmas songs. How did they do it? What did they just add sleigh bells? So, so the, to me, the original song was uh-huh. a Christmas song, but then because people picked up on that, and there is like it's like going home for Christmas Eve or something is one of the lyrics. But they right. are they are adamant. And when I was at Spark, <laughs> uh, Reese playlisted it for the local music playlist in like May, and I was like, "Why is this song? It's a Christmas song being playlisted in May." But everybody, everybody except for me, just about is adamant that it's not a Christmas song. But I was hoping it would be out that way, but. Right, I'll have to get back to you on it. Um, right. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I think I'm probably, I'm a, I'm a contrary enough person to think, th- and obviously my definition of Christmas song seems to be looser than yours as well. So I'll probably be on your side on this, Lee. I'll check it out and get back to you. But yeah, I think if you mention Christmas and like going home and stuff like that, then yeah, you're definitely in, you're definitely yeah. in the Venn diagram of Christmas songs, aren't you? 100%. Yeah, I'll get back to you. I feel a bit ignorant for not knowing it, but I'll, I'll check it out. So how have they made it more Christmassy? Have they put more Christmas lyrics in? Uh, yeah. No, I think the lyrics are the same from what I remember. I think it's just got a bit more kind of bells and stuff in it, you know, a bit more production. Yeah. Bells and brass, yeah. yeah you know. Um, but your latest Christmas song is uh, Out Now, It's Okay To Be Alone, featuring Benjamin Amos. Uh, how did you two kind of work together? Because he's just released a Christmas album himself, so I guess <laughs> it was a natural collaboration. Yeah, um, so Ben, Ben and me both live in Durham City. Um, I, I ben, when Ben first moved here a few years ago, I, I think he'd been here about less than a week, and I, I ended up sitting next to him at the laundrette. You know, in Durham, there's a laundrette where they have gigs, and I really scared him because he knew some people I knew a little bit, and I, and I was like, "Oh, welcome to Durham." Um, <laughs> so um, I didn't really see much of him for a few years. I think I scared him off. Um, but he does, a, as you know, he's in Nalan Lit and he, he does a lot of stuff with Spooker Records, um, who I'm kind of friendly with and stuff. So I knew, I knew him a bit more through that. Um, and basically he just, he knew I did an annual Christmas song um, and Claire, who's in Nalan Lit, did my backing vocals the year before and stuff. Uh, so he just contacted me in about October and said, can I help you this year? To have, I think he wanted to kind of cross promote his Christmas album by getting involved with mine. Um and I, at that point, like I normally don't start until mid-November, but at that point, somehow I'd got the, the, the a couple of verses, the chorus, drums, bass, brass line, um, kind of like the basics down, but it had a lot of space in it. Uh, so Ben, um, I've seen him kind of writing before, but Ben's just like everything I'm not. He's he's really quick. He's really confident. He's really talented you know like he can sing in tune he can play in time straight away and he just hears things and um, so with, i think he spent two or three evenings just adding layers and layers of, of of guitars and vocals mainly but also just little other kind of ear candy just to just to lift it up so yeah he transformed it from being a bit um not my normal stuff there's quite a lot of space for my vocals in the middle he kind of lifted it and made it i would say 300 percent more christmasy um so it was all just remote it was all just him sending me files and then i mixed it at the end um, but yeah, he's just so easy to work with. He could um, so quick and so so good, and you can hear his influence in the Nalan Lit sound. You know, I don't know if you've seen them live ever, or I don't think I've seen uh, them live. They did a session for him once, but yeah. other than that, yeah, yeah, no, he's he's amazing, Ben. I mean, all all of that Nalan Lit lot are really talented, but um, yeah, you kind of for me, Ben's got like a sound. He's got like a <laughs> he's kind of I say he's bend all over my Christmas song. <laughs> um, <laughs> But yeah, he's, he, when you kind of tune into it, you kind of hear him in quite a few records. You know, he's he's yeah, he's he's great. So um, so yeah, so that's where it came from. Um, and uh, yeah, really pleased. It saved me a lot of work <laughs> um, until it came to mixing it because I'm used to having like twelve channels to mix, and that's only had sixty. <laughs> oh, wow. But it was that. Uh, yeah, uh, and kind of lyrically, and even the title, it's okay to be alone. Uh, how much is that kind of an overarching Christmas theme, and how much is it to do with kind of lockdown and how many more people this year, I guess, will be spending Christmas alone? Yeah, I mean, it was. I think it was. I don't think it would have come out if it wasn't for lo- for the coronavirus this year and like um, the the social restrictions were under. Um, but I don't think it's overtly about that. It. Um, so I, d- I did kind of start writing some of the lyrics at first were really specifically COVID related, but I just felt they didn't really, I don't know, this, I find it very difficult to write about stuff that's uh, that could be deemed political, although I've got quite strong political views. I just find it hard to kind of put it in without it kind of clanging and sounding a bit awkward. So I try and 
I guess I try and write in ways that kind of connect more emotionally than kind of directly politically, I guess. So yeah, there were some lyrics which I thought, you know, might might come out wrong or might be misunderstood or might date badly. So they just didn't sound very good. So I took them out. So it's definitely now kind of, yeah, more of a arm around the shoulder to anyone any year that's, you know, spending Christmas without without anyone. There's a lot of people out there out there with it. Um so yeah, yeah, it's it's it was definitely inspired by the year we've had, but also kind of you know, I want people to be coming back every year Lee, and playing it. I don't I don't want uh, <laughs> I want it to be I want it to be uh, a Christmas classic for the ages, obviously. So yeah, so it's it's a forever it's a forever track for anyone in that situation, I'd say. Speaking of forever tracks, uh your next one, the second song in the kind of top five that you've made for work. Um, is actually a song that I didn't recognise by name, but then once I started playing it, realised, oh yeah, I know what this is. Uh, the Waitresses. Yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. Um, yeah, so so when you listen to it, do you, you just go, oh yeah, I've heard that all the time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Um, it, I think next year, like, I want to s- try and steal the feel of it, like the tempo and the kind of bounciness of it for my, my one. It was really... It, it feels Christmas instantly. What I like about it is that it's got complex lyrics. It's it's got like it's really just um, <clears throat> like the lyrics are just really rapid fire. You miss half of it the first time. You have to you get it after ten listens. You get new things. And there's there's a really good story running through it all about how um, about how she's um, fed up with the stress of Christmas and is just going to have a quiet one this year and kind of say no to all her inv- invitations and stuff and kind of interspersed it's talking about how she was trying to hook up with someone in uh, April sorry in kind of spring summer and the fall as, they, as she calls it um, but, but then it all works out when they meet right at the end of the song when they're trying to buy cranberry sauce on Christmas Eve you know so it's it's um, I love a story arc the lyrics are sound and it's just it's just a great tune yeah I think it's uh, it's um, that, yeah, I think I think it's uh, I think that def- is it is it a cheesy Christmas hit? Well, I have put in my notes just cheese ish because like I think it it sounds cheesy, but then once you kind of pay attention to it, like you say, like it's got it's got a lot more complexity to it than say Mariah Carey, E Seventeen, etc. Um, so I think it's one of those that kind of has that really nice mix where it's cheesy but also quite credible. So yeah, 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 it's, yeah, it's just really um, so. I was passing my mouse and you were disappearing. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I love it. It's um, it, it ticks all the boxes, it gets you dancing, but it's also like got some depth to it. Yeah, it's great. Uh, so it's not just Christmas music that you do. I will also talk about the kind of things that you focus on. I'll not just be your, your auntie and your, your friend from school. Um, so you've got an EP coming out, is it early next year? Uh, yeah, February the 5th. Just one. I don't want to. I don't want to spam people. Um, <laughs> I've got. Um, I've got dust. I've got a remix coming out, um, which uh, Jane um, me lost me. Uh, J- Jane Dent's done. So I've got a remix of Dust coming out in middle of January, whatever the Friday is in the middle of January, and then the EP is out a couple of weeks after. It's just four tracks um, that I did last summer, um, and it's on. There's. There's a. I've done like a few. They've cut eight inch vinyl. Eight inch, yeah, that's right. Isn't it? <laughs> and that's that that I've got upstairs, so I'll be kind of pushing that, and I'll probably put like um like a sing- like a second single off it. Um, but I'm going to resist the urge to kind of release one at a time. I know I know that's probably like the the best way to do it these days, but I just it's a lot of work, a lot of admin doing that. <laughs> so I'll probably just go remix and then boom, and then send one of the tracks out as a kind of single at a time. So I've got that coming out. Um. And I've got a, I've got an album that is largely all the songs are basically there, like recorded. I need to kind of nail some of the vocals. Um, I've got, I, I want to try and get something else added on some of them, like another instrument that I need to sort out. But I'm hoping I'm giving myself a deadline of January to finish the to get the music all done. And um, so by May June time, hoping to get that out. So it's got twelve tracks at the minute, and it is like a, it's got a story running all the way through it. So uh, look out for that. I think I think like I think it's the best thing I've done. But I guess everyone says that about the new release, don't they? It's better than this EP. It's better than the EP I'm putting out in February. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Although the EP is alright. Um, yeah. So, but I'm really excited about that. So I want to try and kind of um, do the best kind of release I can for that and plan it all out properly. I've had a few, a couple of people collaborate on it and done really nice jobs and stuff. So that's been my main focus this year. 
and then I've got another mm, kind of two and a half projects that I'm involved in, like two that I'm directly involved in everything on and one I'm doing a couple of bits on um, that'll hopefully come out next year. Um, so yeah, just really busy. Um, just using that window between the kids going to bed and me going to sleep, which is like eight till 10 when I'm useful to kind of move everything on a little bit at a time. It's really, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's really yeah, time consuming doing stuff. Um, but, but yeah, no, it's been a, it's 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 a weird kind of thing, isn't it? Because I'm conscious that a lot of my friends in bands and things have had a real kind of block of a year. Nothing's really moved, but it's kind of a boom time for a solo artist, I guess. Really, isn't it? You know, it's easy for me to do a live stream. I don't have to really rehearse. Um, I mean, I do rehearse li- loud because I, I can't cope otherwise. But um, generally, I can do stuff at home. I can write at home. It's um, it's been quite a productive year, really. Whereas I think I've got friends who are in bands where they like where they write together and things where they've just been really frustrated. So I am grateful. And it's the best time of year to be grateful, you know. Thanksgiving will be American a bit, <laughs> but you have your kind of final uh, track in your top five Christmas songs. Um, another one that I didn't know about, but is a band that I've heard. I guess uh, the Fall. Yeah. So the Fall. Um. um I've simultaneously got like, I don't know, a dozen fall albums and I've probably spent, you know, if you put it back to back, I've probably spent a good few months of my life listening to the fall. Um, But at the same time, there's such a uh, kind of cult band where a lot of the, a lot lot of people who like the fall are really obsessive that I I couldn't really hold me on in any conversations with them, despite having invested quite a lot of time and and money in them. Um, But yeah, the, the fall, it does, they've done quite a few Christmas songs. I think, I think they're like, they've, I think they do a version of Jingle Bell Rock that's that's hilarious. Um, maybe Blue Christmas, I think, as well. But yeah, um, Christmas with Simon is the one I picked, um, which was like, I think it's from 91, like the Shift Work album kind of era. Um, and yeah, it's just Marky Smith being Marky Smith, being a bit random. There's, there's facts about Jesus. There's comments about eating too many desserts. There's uh, He just keeps repeating a line about... Um, a big old house in an English village <laughs> and things like that. Um, so I just find it, I think it is a good song, like there's good tunes and stuff in it, but I just think he's a brilliant lyricist and he just brings his own kind of bizarre uh, world to bear on stuff. Well, he's, he obviously he did. He died of being Marky Smith for too long, I think, <laughs> um, a couple of years ago. Um, so yeah, so I kind of wanted to put one of the one of the fall ones in there, and that's the one that kind of grabbed me at the minute. But um, I guess he's an influence in terms of what I do. Um, um, have you listened to much fall yourself, Lee? Not really. I've probably like heard things in passing, but never actively yeah. listened. So he's a maniac, Marky Smith, or he was a maniac. Um, like he's had, he's probably had sixty different band members in the 30, 30 40 years he, he ran his band. 40, 40 years, I guess. Um, and he was always just the focus of it. And he rap, uh, he talks like this, uh, oh, <laughs> quite a lot. Uh, um, but yeah, yeah I, I would, I would advise checking it, checking them out, even if it's just like check, checking out the top, some of the more popular ones. Um, I don't know. It, it, I, I went to. It, it's one of these. The four live were always kind of um, really mixed. You'd either have a brilliant gig where 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 Marky Smith was in a good mood, um, like I've seen him dancing and stealing and. One of the crowd once stole his lyrics off him because he was cheating, reading the lyrics off a bit of paper, and he was just laughing in hysterics. But then, like, 50-50, the, the other 50% of gigs you go to, I've seen him walk off stage three times, like, after a few songs, and even once he didn't even finish one song. Um, <laughs> he was just, like, a real crazy guy. But um, I don't know, so the last time I saw them, I know it's a bit of a long answer to this, last time I saw them was at the, do you remember when the Six Music Festival came to Newcastle Gateshead? And it was at the Sage, and they played in the main hall at the Sage. And again, it was just he was just being a bit of a dick. He was just can I say being a dick on the, on YouTube? Yeah, right. it's just being a bit of a dick, um, which is what he always does. Like he twiddles with the bassist bass amp, and he's sticking the microphones in the bass drum, and just being like that. And there were loads of people around just um, going, "Oh, this is hilarious! This is hilarious!" And it and it just really sad for me because if if you catch him on a good day and he's and he's on it. He's just a, he was just a great songwriter and a great lyricist and someone that I feel like has influenced a lot of what I do. Um, um, and probably influenced a lot of other people, people like Sleaford Mods and stuff, I think, aren't a million miles away. LCD Sound System is kind of quite, a, quite famously kind of in the mould of Marky Smith a lot of the time. Um, yeah, so I kind of felt at the end it just got very sad. He just, uh, 
he always got people coming to his gigs because they had a lot of obsessive cult fans. But really, he just he just kind of lost it for the, at the end. But anyway, yeah, I still think it's a hilarious, funny, amusing song, and that's why it's in my top five. Well, thank you very much for indulging us in this absolute nonsense of a top five Christmas songs video. Um, where can people find you online to find your Christmas music and other music and everything else? Um, <clears throat> yeah, um, I've got a band camp, which is faithfullyhannes.bandcamp.com, which has got all my Christmas songs on there. Um, or just obviously search me on Spotify. I've got a, I've done a handy playlist, which is my pick of the artist pick at the minute with with all my Christmas songs on uh, YouTube. I've, I do I do terrible videos for all of them. Um, so yeah, on the YouTube, um, and they've all I've done that thing that that people like you hate, Lee, where the, the none of them are, none of them are consistent. Um, <laughs> I think my Instagram's faithful dot Johannes, my Facebook is faithful Johannes, all one word, and my Twitter is faithful Johannes without the vowels because there was no space. And I do try and make them consistent. I do. I leak every now and again. I think I'll, I'll sort this out, but people have taken all the obvious ones. You know, faithful Joe, faithful Jay, faithy Jay. <laughs> there's a lot, there's a lot of people with religious convictions out there that want to show that they're faithful, and they're called Joe or Johannes even. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll, I will. I'm open to suggestions, but I will try and um, coordinate them so this answer could have been snappy.